to my YouTube channel and thanks for all of those that have joined me thus far. This video is going to show you how to do reverse decoupage my way and it's going to be one of many uh, how-to videos. So uh, let's get stuck in. So I'm going to show you how you can get any plain vase like this and we can create this. Reverse decoupage, all the work is done on the inside of the vase. We've glued the image side forward and you're now looking at the back of the images and the inside of the vase. I've gilded behind it. Use gold size and mica powder. Sounds complicated and it's not. Great results can be achieved. So I started um, doing reverse decoupage about 20 years ago. This is my boy, he's now a man with his own family and this was his favorite parrot. I was looking into decoupage because I love images. Ordinary decoupage, you layer up many, many layers of varnish over the top. I thought it was quite sneaky to do it the other way and go inside the vase. So that's how it all began. So we could start with a saucer. Got one image, one saucer. We glue it from behind here. We could use coasters, make a very bespoke set of coasters. These are a lot of fun. That's just a very cheap paperweight. There's absolutely no limitations. So to begin, you need to select your images. You need to know one very important thing, which is they need to be laser copies, not inkjet. You must use laser copies. They will not run. The second most important thing is to get really strong colors. And I'll show you here. This is a tropical vase. It's chosen for, for the rich purples. Bearing in mind what sort of background you're going to use, you need to choose your images and use them with as much color as you possibly can muster. So choosing images is, uh, is a heap of fun. There's a few examples here, some florals. Butterflies are a wonderful filler. I've got sheets and sheets of butterflies. Sometimes I like to get a bit tricky and do vines. They're great to go up the whole length of the vase. Here's a wisteria sheet. I do these sheets here, and the reason for that is just to make it cheaper. I can do a whole vase out of one sheet, which is about $3 to me here. This is one that we're going to do. Here's the sheet and here's it cut out. So once you've got your laser copies, the first step is to cut them out. For that, I use a very old self-healing board and I just use a normal cheap Stanley knife blade. Tried a lot of really fancy pen-like knives. I break them all. They just snap. I'm, I'm too strong. I, I go too hard out. Find what works for you. Uh, you'll find your groove. I find my groove with this. You know, you, you can cut them out as well as you want. Nobody's really going to tell. So when you're cutting your images out, just try and make it easy for you. If you make a mistake, don't worry. You can glue it to the vase just the same in two, three, five pieces as you could with one piece. You can go as cleanly and as detailed as you want. Keep it fun, keep it light. You must go with the flow. I tend to move the image around in circles quite a bit as you can see me doing now. With that, you can get the right curve and then you can come back and take the zigzags out of it later. Don't try to do it all at once. Just do another circle with your piece of paper and come back and get it. So you try to go as close to the outline as possible. Try to think of yourself as a human photoshopper as you are just going around the image. You don't want to have a white halo line around every image. What you are going to get, no matter how tidy you have cut out the image, you're going to end up getting a cut line. So you're going to get the white edge of the paper. So I have found a system that works well by outlining with some felt tips. And I must say, although I'm using kitty felt tips, which is all I could find today, uh, avoid the permanent markers, avoid the sharpies. They're too strong and they bleed. They look really great until you put them in the vase. Just get any cheap felt tip pens you can. Go around the image as you can see me doing here and you get a lovely, lovely clean look. So the next step is to put the images initially on the outside of the vase. We've got the placement. Imagine them all as they are on the inside of the vase and enjoy the background. It's a negative space, but it can be very beautiful. Now I'm just using some blue tack. You've got to be careful with the blue tack though, because if you mistakenly catch the image side, the color will come off. That's why I don't play and arrange on the inside of the vase. As you glue the images into the inside of the vase, as you see me do that, you'll find that Leaving the others on the outside shows you your place perfectly so you won't get lost. So it's a heap of fun arranging the images to the outside of the vase. Just have plenty to play with. Playful is the word, you can't go wrong. So on the theme of experimenting, I used to do a lot of Tudor ladies. Quite by accident, one of my backgrounds of a cut out Tudor lady, I put it down onto something very bright and colourful. Voila! Up comes this gorgeous looking 
woman that I actually preferred in some ways to a Tudor looking lady. All sorts of possibilities. There really is nothing that you can't do with a piece of paper. So all we're really going to need for gluing is PVA, Aqua here, which is a little more see-through. It says here it dries clear. Ordinary PVA also dries clear, but extra protection. I'm going to use a saucer, I'm going to use a brush, and I'm going to use some water. And I am going to use some newspaper. You really just want to glue one image for one sheet. So one of the really important parts of the process is to aim at getting 50% PVA glue here to 50% water. Like this, just to show you. It's a guess, always is a guess with me. We'll just try and uh, do 50-50 here. I'll be happy with that. We're going to mix it up. You've diluted the PVA roughly 50-50. Now, at the moment, we've got a little bit of blue tack. And don't forget to take all the blue tack away. You don't want blue tack anywhere near the process after you've finished positioning. If it's diluted too much, it won't glue properly. If it's not diluted enough, you're going to get a sheen. The sheen is the thing that can go wrong because there's like this plastic thing in the way. So this is why we dilute the PVA. This is the correct way of doing the image. You keep it pretty much in the same place by putting your finger on. As you put on the diluted PVA, it seems to shrink into itself and go into little balls and just disappear. Just keep going, get a really good coverage, make sure it's on every bit, and that's the look you want. If you leave it too long at this point, it's gonna grab the newspaper and you don't want that to happen, so move quickly. Once you position it onto the glass, you've got plenty of time to move it. Don't panic at this point. I'm moving him down and then I'm going to turn it over and at this point I'm just going to press get his little ears in there. So as you can see we've got these bubbles here we need now to take them away. I'll show you how we will do that. Here's an ordinary bowl of water. I use face cloth. You might think a sponge would be better. I've got about five or six behind me and so I keep changing them out. You don't want them to get too gluey so you want to keep this as clean as possible. So the dishcloth is not dripping wet. It's been squeezed out. On here, I'm going to press downwards. So initially I won't look on the inside, but I'll just press. And you start from the middle, and like any air bubble, you're just trying to find how it wants to come out. I then need to work carefully. Now, as long as you're not going to go sideways, you can put untold pressure, and you're going to work out where your, where your glue's going to exit. You're going to chase it along. Obviously this bit here, I'm just going to chase it either sideways or down the bottom. I'm not 100% successful, it's not going to matter because it is going to dry clear. But you're going to do as much of this as you can. You can go too far. And if you go too far and you rip the paper, stick something in the way. And you'd be really surprised how well it dries together. This will be drying as tough as old cardboard. You're not going to be able to move this off unless you get a Stanley knife blade and actually scrape it off. I'm happy with that now. It's going to dry a lot clearer. Got that, that. Okay, got my glasses on. So here's the big boy. This is gonna be great. Sublime to the ridiculous. Nice entry here, lots of space to get your arm in. You give it a damn good clean. I just use the window cleaner. Get that inside where you're gonna glue really clean. The next thing to consider is, as much as at this stage, I feel quite inclined to get this fussy wisteria all done at the, at the top. Really, it's more practical to start at the bottom. You're not gonna wipe out or when you get your dishcloth in there and do a bit of squeezing of the air bubbles. You're not going to accidentally dislodge or move on or ruin the work you've just done on the top. Start at the bottom generally and work your way up. The other thing you must consider at this point is where the foremost is and you glue that first. As you can see, I'm gluing the wisteria vase. I'm moving fairly quickly. If you take too long when you're applying the glue, the image will stick to the newspaper. You have to go with haste. You have to take it off the newspaper and you have to get it onto the inside. You shouldn't have to panic, but you do have to go quickly. What you can't see me doing is I'm actually changing out my glue about four times during this vase. I only mix enough that I can keep it liquid, I can keep it to the point where there isn't any white flecks of the PVA solidifying in my mix. So that was a lot of gluing. We are now all finished on the inside of the vases and the next stage would be to clean off the vases and prepare them for the background. Here's some photos of all the vases together. 
So before the application of the background, uh, you're going to need to clean some of this residue glue. Just need to get rid of any bits of paper particularly because they would really stand out. You don't have to be too picky around the wisteria. A slight halo effect is not going to be a problem. It's a very quick process. You can either use uh, like a dry method with your finger and just, just rub it off or you can use a damp cloth but uh, not too damp, just enough to move on the PVA. So all the glue is cleaned off now and it's best to start preparing for the background which I'm going to do a couple of different ways. Now for this lovely vase here we are going to gild it from behind and to do that we're going to use this gold leaf size which is a bit like PVA but it never goes hard, it stays tacky so the mica powder can stick to it as you'll see. Now we've got some lovely examples of some mica powder behind us and we've got a rich gold here but we've got other colours that I'll be showing you as well. So it's as simple as pouring it in this way. This is a fairly big job, so it's going to take a fair bit. So I can probably start with that much, or maybe a bit more. And then it's just, it's more of a daubing. You're not really brushing it so much. You, you splatter it like that, you get every bit. So the daubing gives that lovely texture. You can see that I'm creating a texture now. And you will have to go in behind and make sure, because as easy as it is to see between in the negative space between the images, you have to make sure that every part of your image is covered. Now, once this, this is all finished, this process, you have to leave it overnight. So I would probably start the same time tomorrow that I've done this. You want it good and tacky, it won't set, but it will get really tacky, but it's that simple. So here we are 24 hours later and you can see that the daubing texture is still visible but instead of being white it has gone clear. It's now ready to have the mica powder inside of it. It will grab that mica powder really well, it's still tacky. Now we'll start with this larger vase, it's lighter in the imagery and we're going to use a darker gold because of that. This is a, a rich sort of old gold. We're going to just pour it in, shake it all about and pour it back out onto the paper and back into the tin. This tin was given to me many years ago, I've tried to use it up, haven't got that far yet, it just goes forever. So I'm going to liberally throw this in, I might as well just go like this. Gold everywhere, again I won't waste any shake it all about. You can see inside it's been grabbed by the gold leaf size, it's grabbing the mica powder. It's really cool because I didn't really have to handle the gold size much and now I'm not having to handle the mica powder at all. We're just going to shake it all about. It's quite a big vessel this one. I've got this piece of paper here, we can just pop it back in the tin when we're finished. Tip this upside down, have a look there. All the daubing wrinkles are there. If you tried to brush it, you'd have lime. Just, just daub it madly and then you've got a random textured look. Shake the excess out. There we go. Right, we're on to the next one now. And we're going to try the sunny gold. It should be much brighter. And the reason I'm going to do that is these images are much darker. So we'll give this a go. I haven't actually tried this one, so it'll be an interesting effect. It's much brighter. We won't be wasting any though. We'll be shaking it about. Oh, my goodness me, this is going to be bright. But you never quite know how it's going to turn out. You might find out it's a bit different. Be leaving it a few days to find out. That's pretty economical. You can see that, I don't know, two big tablespoons. It grabs onto that uh, gold size. It's not a thick coat, it's a thin coat. In fact, you can see right through it. So here are the two different mica powders. There's a good contrast for you to see there. We didn't use very much mica powder at all. We shook it all back into the jar and it started pretty much like that. So it's actually a very economical process. 
So here we are three days later, back after we've left the mica powder, and I'm now going to show you how we're going to pour the polyurethane in to seal this lovely gold texture. And there it is, just the dry mica powder, and we shall be pouring the polyurethane in now. I'm going to pour it straight from the can. Normally I'd have a jar, but this is such a large vessel, it's uh, silly to waste our time. The one thing to remember with the polyurethane is do not use the acrylic based polyurethane. Use the turpentine cleanup polyurethane. I'm just swirling it around, give it a good first coat. I'm going to probably do three coats on this vase, make it completely sealed, and any excess will be popped straight into this vase so we don't waste the poly. You can use it on another vase. So the easiest way I've found when you pour the polyurethane in to get a nice thin first coat is to put it upside down for a short period of time. Don't want it to pull at the bottom of the vase. It will never go off if it's too thick. It'll stay rubbery. You don't want to ruin all your hard work. This particular vase is going to be spray painted gold. In preparation for that, what I've found is that on the white areas, the gold spray paint, be it black, gold, or whatever color you use, does a speckled leaching or bleeding through only on the light images. So to protect this particular area of the vase, rather than just go right in and spray now, I'm going to just do a 100% PVA. So all we're doing is protecting our white or light areas. It's just something I've learnt. You can get away with it, but why worry? And whilst I'm doing the white, I'll just continue down a bit. As you can see, we have our two mica powdered vases here in the back. And with these two vases here, I'm going to be spraying the inside of this one gold, contrast the red nicely. We're going to spray this one with black inside. So we'll go and do that now. It's as easy as that. That's one thin layer. To avoid drips, I'll probably do three thin layers. So here's the finished vases. And just to recap, this one here was done with the spray gold. This one was the sunny uh, mica powder, which was brighter and lighter. And this was the old gold or the rich gold. Here we have all the mica powder showing between the images. It's come up beautiful. Really love this one. And here we have a lamp base and I've spray painted the background in black from the inside. So the only stage I didn't show you was spraying the inside of the vases with the black spray paint. That's purely cosmetic because you hide the relief of the paper on the inside. You can't see all the work that's gone on and it just tidies them up. As you can see, it's just a blackness as opposed to seeing what you've actually done. It just hides all the work. It tidies them up beautifully. So this is the Pugman that I showed you the technique of the gluing. And we have here another couple of examples of the plates. We've got a brighter gold on this one and a paler gold here. And the Pugman itself is actually the same gold as the vase. So you can get lots of different colors in the gold spray paint. I think that this one was actually called metallic brass. So don't be put off with the word brass as well. You can see I couldn't help myself and I just added a few stamps here. They're just the rubber stamps that you can get. And just for a bit of humor, this one itself has a few more images. And for around here, I just got some appropriate stamps, stamp them from behind. And when you spray paint, they come up really well. I use the Stars On ink. I love the effect. I just think it just gives you that little bit of a story. This bunny here has been chased by some dogs. And of course the dog's looking after the bunny on this one. So it all feeds in. These are interesting. These are just the paperweights. We've popped some green felt on the back. Didn't go through any other process other than gluing them as I did the pug, as I did the vases. And these are sort of cool because the eyes tend to follow you around the room. They're just a bit odd. So that's my entire process of how to do reverse decoupage. I hope you've uh, found it fun and that you'll have the confidence to give it a go. You know, start small and give yourself a nice wide neck like this one. Don't, don't attempt to get in here first time up. 
So after all this hard work, we want to prolong the life of the vase and make it look as lovely as it does right now. And I've been asked many times whether you can just put water in them and use them as a vase. And technically you can, because they're polyurethane and sealed. But in case there's a prick from a, an artificial flower or a berry branch, use a liner. Just cut off something, an old drink bottle, and then you're totally safe. And last but not least, as with all really good art, don't leave it in the direct sunlight. It will fade uh, over the years, and that would be a great shame. So just enjoy all your hard work and keep it looking lovely. I hope you've been inspired by this how-to video. There's many more to come. What would really help is if you got to push this little button here that says subscribe. There's a photo of me, subscribe will come up, push it. I know it's weird, please do it and bye for now.